The side draft carburetors in our classic British cars are quite different from the downdraft carburetors many other automotive applications use. Side draft carburetors aren't complicated, but as is often the reality, things we don't understand can be intimidating. Let's have a look at how these elegantly simple and effective carburetors work. First, what makes them quite different is that they are horizontal carburetors. This bolts to the side of the motor like you see it here. The air enters in from the side, passes through, and comes out the other side and into the engine. So that's a big difference between this and most carburetors. However, on the other end, it's very similar to every carburetor because it's got a throttle. It's right there. This is going to allow. So when the person inside the car, for example, steps on the gas pedal, this opens and opens, opens, opens. More air can enter into the engine and she'll go faster and faster. When the person takes their foot off the gas pedal, this closes and closes and we go back to idle speed again. The challenge for automotive engineers worldwide when dealing with any kind of carburetor is to achieve and maintain the proper air fuel ratio in a variety of operating conditions. And what does that mean? Well, imagine for a moment that this is at idle. At idle speed, this has got to be able to receive the air and fuel ratio that it needs to keep this engine going at idle speed. But when the person begins to step on the gas pedal and this opens, the dynamics are going to change drastically, and yet it still has to be able to provide the right air-fuel ratio for the engine at mid-range. And when they push it wide open, as you see it there, again, the engineers have to face the challenge of getting the right air-fuel ratio wide open throttle. And there are, of course, endless varieties of exactly little teeny spaces in the middle there. And they all have to be accounted for. So that's how they did it. That was the challenge. The answer to it was by blending two simple principles. And those principles are blended into this carburetor in a form which is referred to as constant depression. Now, what is constant depression? To understand constant depression, think of the weather person you see in your local television weather report. The weather person is usually standing in front of a map of your part of the world. Often you will see a large letter H on the map. And I'm going to put one right here where moss sits. Okay, and oftentimes on the same map there's a large letter L, and I'm going to put it up between someplace between moss and the Aleutian Islands, right there. The H stands for high pressure. The air pressure here is relatively higher than the air around it. The low, or the L over here, stands for low pressure, which means that the air pressure around here in a relative sense is lower than the air surrounding it. Lower pressure is often called a depression. In fact, sometimes when a storm is born in a warmer part of the earth, it's called a tropical depression. That's why it's lower air pressure. Air in a high pressure area, as here, is inclined to want to travel to the low pressure area and fill it in. Okay? Nature abhors a vacuum, so what she's going to try to do is fill it in. When the air moving from one place to the next is traveling, we call that wind. A classic example of what we're talking about is if you've ever gone to a tire on your car, taken the cap off the valve stem, and then unscrewed the Schrader valve from inside, instantly the air comes racing out. In a relative sense, there's more air or more air pressure inside the tire than there is outside, and the air travels from the high point to the low point, normally. Now, if you've ever seen a satellite image of a low pressure area, it's kind of interesting. You see one right here. And what's interesting is you can see it right there, and it's pulling air and clouds and wind in from all directions to try to fill this in because we have less pressure here than we have around it. That's exactly what we're looking at. However, as, as obvious as this is, when we're talking about a carburetor. We can't have air racing in at varying speeds from varying directions to try to fill it. We need control. We need to have the air travel in one place, travel out the other, and get the right amount of fuel as she's going through. How does she do that? How does constant depression work inside here? Well, at one end of this, you can see the throttle plate. Okay, we know what this does. At the other end, we've got a piston, and you know what that does. It's blocking this off. This piston can move up and down, but right now it's closed, and this is blocked off. In the middle between the piston inside here and the throttle plate here is an empty area, which is called the constant depression chamber. Okay, that's where the magic happens. Now then, imagine that we're sitting at idle speed. The throttle is closed, as you see here. The only air this engine is getting is getting around the edges of this disc, or maybe the throttle is open a teeny bit, just like that. That's all the air she gets. As we've got a vacuum here or a low pressure zone here, outside we have a high pressure zone. The air on the outside wants to get in. It's trying to get in, and if she tries to get in, she can't. She can't get in the middle, the side, the left, up or down, because the piston's in the way. But underneath it, there is a little teeny channel. And the air can squeeze and travel underneath there. 
You can't see it yet. You'll see it in just a moment. But underneath this piston is a flat bridge that goes from side to side like this. And in the middle of the bridge is a little tube we call the jet. And as the air is traveling, it has to squeeze between here and here. It passes right along the side of the jet. The vacuum that's inside this constant depression chamber is pulling the air in and pulling fuel from the jet. So what happens is, is the air enters, passes under the piston, mixes with fuel, and a mix of air fuel, the right mix, travels and goes to the engine. Now what happens if the person who's sitting at idle begins to open the throttle and let more air in? Well, when they do that, the vacuum, which is out here, the low pressure zone, is going to begin to climb inside here. And in this constant depression chamber, we're going to begin to develop more vacuum. That's going to try to pull more air in under here, but it can't. The piston is in the way. However, even though I can't get much more air in because it's blocked off, the vacuum is pulling on the fuel too, and she will pull fuel. So what's going to happen to me? I'm going to wind up with not enough air, too much fuel, and I'm going to have a rich mixture. How did they get around that? This is where constant depression comes in. I've got another carburetor just like that one. And here it is right here. There's your throttle on one side there. There's your piston on the other side. You know the piston moves up and down. And I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take the compression, the, depression, the, the vacuum chamber off the top. I'm going to take the spring off. And here's your piston. And I'm going to take your piston right out. Before we talk about the piston, look inside. There's the bridge I told you about going left to right. The piston sits down on top of that. And right in the middle, you see the jet that I was telling you about. The fuel enters the airstream right there. Now, here's our piston. Imagine she's down all the way, all the way to the bottom. A little bit of air can squeeze on underneath. Now, imagine that the person who we talked about is going to go and step on the gas pedal and open that throttle. When they do, what's going to happen? More vacuum behind this piston in this constant depression chamber is going to accumulate. And look what's at the bottom of the piston. Two holes facing the back where the vacuum is. And they go right up into here. This is just hollow. That's all there is to it. This is sitting inside this vacuum chamber at the top. So imagine, we're sitting at idle speed. There's a little bit of vacuum. The air is traveling under here, picking up fuel, and everybody's happy. It all works the way that it's supposed to. The person now steps on the gas pedal a little bit. As they do, more vacuum accumulates behind here, travels up into here, goes up inside here, and evacuates or creates a vacuum inside here. And what that does is it pulls the piston up. If they give it a little bit of fuel, it pulls the piston up a little bit. They open a little bit more fuel. In other words, they open the throttle plate in the back. More vacuum gets in there, and it'll pull it. If you go wide open throttle, it'll pull this all the way to the top. So that means that I'm never going to have too much vacuum. The vacuum being regulated, a constant depression chamber. Remember, the air goes in right past the piston here. Right in here, this constant depression is always regulated. If it becomes a little too high, the piston's going to rise and let air in to bring it back down. If it gets a little too low, the piston will fall and make it come back up again. It keeps it regulated, and that works well. That's how the constant depression feature works. Now, a person could say, okay, I understand, but you said we had to have the right air-fuel ratio at all kinds of operating conditions. Well, if this, and I saw this, when this is all the way down, this needle, when you're at idle speed, for example, this needle is going to block off that jet. Well, almost. In fact, this needle blocks that jet off almost completely. So because we're at idle and we only have a little bit of air, she can only pull a little bit of fuel out, and that's great. And the person says, but when the piston goes up, the needle is still in the jet. We're not going to be able to get enough fuel. But notice, look carefully at this needle. It's wider from top, from left to right at the top than it is at the bottom. So when we're at idle speed and she's all the way down in the jet, only a little bit of fuel can get through. However, when the piston begins to rise and we get narrower and narrower and narrower, more fuel can enter the airstream, exactly when the engine is asking for more fuel. So that's how it works. At idle speed or very, very low speeds, the fuel is almost choked off. She gets very little fuel. When I'm wide open throttle and I want my motor to give me everything it can, it's way up here, lots of fuel can enter the airstream and we get exactly what we want. And because this is an infinite number of possible positions in the middle, it adjusts itself each way as she goes. So there she is, the constant depression side draft carburetor, an example of elegant engineering in a package that's so simple it seems to thrive on neglect. Thank you.